Thanks for listening to Utah Public Radio. I'm Shalane Smith-Needham. We continue talking movies with UPR's film critic Casey T. Allen. Hi, Casey. Hello. Disney has released another live-action film from their animated films. Cruella is now out in theaters. What's your take? Oscar winner Emma Stone plays the title role in the dark and snazzy origin story of Cruella de Vil. One of the most flamboyant villains in the canon of Disney animated films who was first brought to life on the big screen in 1961's 101 Dalmatians and was then followed by a handful of sequels and remakes. This origin story shows Cruella long before her obsession with spotted fur. Starting out as Estella, an orphaned girl turned pickpocket with dreams of becoming a fashion designer, she gets a job working under a famed fashion house in punk 1970s London, where she gradually embraces her alter ego of vanity, cruelty, and revenge. Cruella was mostly a fun experience because it wasn't preoccupied with keeping its characters or events surrounded in sweetness and sunshine. Disney producers often seem too concerned meeting a self-imposed quota of roses and daisies in their films, all in the name of brand integrity. But Cruella leans away from that, having two bold, leading female characters in the same film, neither of whom are interested in being likable or thinking about romantic feelings with anyone, is a rarity. Emma Stone's Cruella is a street-smart grifter with a talent for boisterous counterculture and flirting with trouble. Emma Thompson, as her mentor, is a gracefully condescending symbol of the establishment who chews her scenery with a controlled abandon. The humor in the screenplay is banal and juvenile, mostly from Cruella's partners in crime, and the plot twists are predictable. But those things didn't really matter to me because the two female leads have so much fun in their layered roles. The film is dark and its narrative energy remains mischievous and sly, even though some scenes could have been trimmed to quicken the pace. Dramatic costumes paired with rock music by Queen, the Electric Light Orchestra, Florence and the Machine, and The Doors make for a memorable time at the movies. Thank goodness the director, Craig Gillespie, was allowed to embrace the darker side of this story. Well, Casey, this is one of many Disney animated films to be made into a live-action film. Why do you think they continue to remake their classics? The most important ingredient in Disney magic, money, It's, of course, a very easy way to make money. It gets a lot of people to the theaters. Uh, Young children will go, possibly uh, watching these stories for the first time. And then older people like me will have this intersectionality going on, remembering the original films and interested to go to the theater to see how they've enhanced or altered the stories in a different film. So it's not necessarily the most creative avenue to make movies, but it's smart because it gets people in the theater. All right, Casey, thank you for being here, and we will talk more movies next week. Yes, we will.